something I practice is time restricted eating, where I like to eat all my food within a t like ten hour window. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't go too crazy, but you know, like I like to have a resting period. And you know, when you're when you're not digesting and all that, you are in a repair process, right? You're in repair mode. Um, the problem that a lot of people make with time restricted eating is they go, oh, in order to eat within this ten hour window, I have to skip breakfast, right? So they skip meals, which ends up being caloric restriction in you know combined with the time restricted eating um and so what i i do is not skip meals i do not skip breakfast i do not skip meals um unless you know there's some circumstantial thing that happens where i have to get somewhere or whatever right um but if i'm getting all of my protein within that 10 hour window so it's more of a it's a intermittent fasting but not being in a caloric deficit so getting the same calories that i would get if i was eating my food throughout the day uh, and then I'm adding in resistance training, making sure I'm eating the protein. Is that going to be conducive with, with gaining muscle mass? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we actually are starting to get some good research on this topic. Now, time-restricted feeding, it's interesting you bring that up. I have a paper currently in review or a review paper. A review paper currently in review with my colleague, uh, Alan Aragon, who's a big uh, nutritional expert. And... Um, it's, we cover this exact topic. Uh, the interesting thing with time-restricted feeding, number one, there's various iterations of it. So there's 420. So we have four hours eating and then uh, 20 hours off. There's 618, there's 816. So there's all variations. Then there's also the 2-5 um, concept where you fast for two days and then uh, eat up five days or... So a lot of that will depend upon the specific uh, type of time-restricted feeding. What you're talking about, a 10-hour window, is much more friendly towards anabolism. But most of the time, it's interesting because conceivably, spacing out your protein would logically have benefits. And there's been some research, even longitudinal research, that backs, uh, backs this up, that uh, you get better utilization of protein if it's spread out, let's say, at least over three meals relatively spaced like breakfast lunch and dinner and perhaps even four but now again if you're so this is where the nuances come in if you're a bodybuilder i would recommend trying to take in protein across the day as much as possible because when you're not eating you're catabolic e eating is anabolic so when not eating is catabolic but for these studies on uh, time-restricted feeding really don't show much difference. Now, our measures that we have, our current measures of looking at uh, hypertrophy or you know, even MRI, which is the gold standard, still has a margin of error. It's not like we're doing, uh, you're, you're looking at a cadaver and you're actually you know, measuring or you're doing like rodent research where you actually can uh, weigh the muscle, etc., uh, so our, our measures might not be sensitive enough to detect subtle differences, but for the vast majority of people, I mean, you're not looking to bodybuild, it's just not going to be much of a difference. If you're going to do a 420, I would say you're then going to be in a lot more, and, and there's been research, there's one study certainly showed uh, diminished anabolic, uh, diminished muscle hypertrophy with a 420 versus a traditional eating pattern. I could see where a 2.5 might be have issues. So again, I would say if you're going to, whatever you do, uh, try to structure your training within that eating window that you have. Because, the, and there's actually been quite a lot of research on this, that the body is highly anabolic for at least 24 hours, if not more, after a workout. But when you start getting outside of, you know, six, eight hours or so, it's probably going to trail off where you might not harvest some of the gains, depending upon what you're looking for. Uh, you know, if you're, especially if your goals are more optimizing muscle mass. So I, I would say it's beneficial to try to get the f uh, feeding in within that window, wh whatever it is. If you're going to be, let's say, in a 10-hour window, try to, tra try to train within the earlier part of that eating so that you're going to be able to eat after your workout and not go, let's say, not do it right after your final meal and then be catabolic for 14 hours. Okay, so is there some... With the anabolic window, is there some? It's really, kind a, bar, it's really a barn door. It. Yeah, we've done a ton of research on this. So certainly, it, it's there is somewhat of a window. And even in the paper we publish, which people take, there's no anabolic window. That's not what our research showed, but it showed that it's really minor. The much more important thing is getting your total daily protein intake, in. and that's where, kind of to your point, if you're hitting your 
daily protein requirements, if whatever your window is, uh, if you're doing, let's say, certainly 10 hours, but even like a 8-16, which is the most common uh, time-restricted feeding uh, strategy, um, if you're getting 1.6 grams per kilogram, you're, you're pretty good. You're going to get the majority of your gains regardless. Then it starts to come down. You kind of mentioned this with uh, Stu Phillips uh, in similar veins. That that's kind of like the, now you're starting to get more like the cherry on the sundae here if you want to eke out the maximum amount of gains. And really it's, like I said, more of a barn door. It's not this narrow window. And the, the I think what we've debunked is that after 45 minutes you, oh my God, I got to slam my shake immediately after training or I go catabolic. And even if you're, an advanced bodybuilder. I don't think there's utility. The utility in that is virtually nil. But I do say when I'm coaching bodybuilders, you know, get your protein in as quickly as you can after a workout. You don't have to stress and slam your shake the minute you finish your last set. But because um, small, this is where even small amounts of gains can be the difference between winning and losing a competition. So again, it's highly context specific. We, we try to make these general guidelines and apply it to the population, but everyone has their own you know, goals, their own lifestyle that they have to deal with and other factors, and that needs to be taken into account. If you are working out at home, let's say, and you can go, and you're not a professional bodybuilder, you're a rec recreational, you know, I guess I wouldn't call it a gym goer if you're doing it at home, but you're a recreational at home gym goer. Um, and you can go and take your shake right after your workout because you're at home and it's not stressful and you don't have to think about packing it and all this. I mean, would that it's not going to hurt? And it could have, like, it, even if it helps a tiny a bit, bit right. it's, yeah, I would say it's that is the cost benefit where there is really no cost and a, po a potential very small benefit. Uh, now, again, if you start going longer and longer, if you're taking five, six, seven, eight hours. And again, if you're doing a, let's say a 10, 14, and you train right after your last meal, uh, and then go 14 hours, then you can start compromising some gains. So there's no hard rule to this. It's on a spectrum. But I would say the quicker you can get it in, conceivably, the better. It's just no downside to it. With your, with your, um, you mentioned the, the aging study where, um, the, the fellow from the Netherlands was looking at, I guess, on a you know per per meal um, effect with respect to protein intake and muscle protein synthesis. Um, is it like you know you're you're not going to have three like most people aren't going to do three meals with forty or fifty grams of protein without supplementing on top of that. Like maybe you know maybe there's there's you know some some people that will do it, but not like not all the women. In all of the older folks, you know, for the for the majority, I think of those types of people, they might not be taking in that much protein per per meal. Should they try to at least get forty grams in in, in at least one meal? Um, uh, yeah, you know, I, or, I mean, or is thirty enough? I mean, so is forty better than thirty for these older people? Is it something they should even think about, or is it like it's just the the cherry on top, but you don't stress yourself kind of thing? You so know? yeah, it's great questions, and one of the things I think that needs to be understood is that um, the Studies are sterile. So what I mean by that is that they're taking people, they're going to look at kind of proof of principle. So they take them fasted, they're having nothing in their body, and they're giving them a whey, let's say a whey protein shake. Whey is a very fast-acting protein that gets into your body very quickly, uh, into your circulatory system. The body gets to use the amino acids quickly. When you're eating a whole meal, the amino acids are released in a much more time-released fashion because the body has to digest the food, break it down. There's fats that are going to delay absorption. So again, you're eating, let's say, chicken with um, you know, broccoli and rice, et cetera. You're eating a, a whole meal. Um, there's time-delayed release of, uh, of nutrients into your body. So you don't, that's why I said the most important thing, 90% is targeting your, I, I hate to give exact percentages because I'm just pulling that out of the air, but. I just want to emphasize the vast majority is getting your uh, total daily, worrying about getting your total daily protein intake, stressing over this, you know, minutia of how much is in the meal. If you're getting, if an older individual is taking in 1.6 grams, they're going to be doing fine. They're, they're not going to be meaningfully compromising their gains unless they're looking to bodybuild, do a master's level bodybuilding show.